my pleasure to welcome you all uh, for this uh, two days activity uh, by the psychiatry department in collaboration with the education uh, department. It's uh, regarding uh, internet, uh, cyber, psychology. Uh, today we are having a very distinguished uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Majdi Ahmed, who will give a lecture in English and tomorrow it's going to be an Arabic lecture by me and we have the poster exhibit if you didn't have time to have a look at it in the lobby please do. Uh, I'm really glad, I'm really honored to have uh, Professor Majdi Ahmed here between us today and uh, I would like to send my apologies in, on behalf of the uh, administration and the hospital because he was waiting for one hour uh, at the gate unfortunately so we are very sorry uh, Dr. Majdi and thank you for being with us. Uh, Dr. Majdi is a prominent uh, psychiatrist and psychotherapist. Um, he's here with us in Saudi Arabia since 2012 at King Abdul Aziz uh, National Guard <coughs> Hospital, Al Hasa. Uh, and he has been in uh, the UK since 1992. He has many publications, many research, and uh, he's interested in the area of uh, uh, psychology and psychotherapy. Uh, he has a very long CV. I will not uh, spend much time in it and I just leave the floor for him, Dr. Majdi. He has a problem in his knee, so he will just <laughs> remain seated. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. I believe that you don't believe it is aging. It's my problem with my knee. I'm waiting for one hour. So uh, please bear with me if I will be sitting. Uh, okay. Uh, I tried my best today to try to make this talk more light, more not deeper in psychiatry and psychotherapy, to make it appealing to everybody uh, from different tastes and from different disciplines. So please uh, forgive me if I couldn't manage to do so. Uh, this is the reference list. I'm happy to uh, send it and email it to anybody from which I got um, most of my talk. Uh, what we are going to talk today, we are not going to talk about is it important to serve or not to serve on the net. Uh, we are not coming here to be, uh, have got technophobia about this is bad or this is good. We are not here to have any moral views about the internet. We are not going to talk about a specific psychiatric disorder which is internet addiction. It's more or less, it is a way of brainstorming session for all of us, which is affecting us in a different way or another. Nobody is immune now from the internet. So we wanted to have some debate, and we will raise this debate by this talk, and hopefully in the future, I'm more than happy when your gate situation improved, I might come to do more talking to more depth issues if you are happy with that. But let us today make it more of a brainstorming session and talk about general issues. I will try to highlight some of the areas of concern. It is a new era. We are in a new era. And if we believe that we are scientists in a way, we have to be critical in what we are seeing in front of us. So, in a situation where if you are a lecturer, most likely you will be talking to your student and most of them, they are living in a different... If you, Unfortunately, that picture is not that clear enough, but the topic there is, has got nothing to do with what is in the screen of those students. Okay? You can see a few uh, Facebook and a few YouTube which have got nothing to do with that. And the most important, famous clip here, a very important international political moment. And uh, the president was keen to go into <laughs> texting somebody. Okay? So, uh, uh, but yes, he is the man of the more superpower of the world. But if, if somebody of that caliber, he would not miss the, the minute to get into the cyber world, then we have got to ask ourselves a many questions. Uh, this just would remind me, my grandmother came from, uh, well, came from a small village from White Mile in Sudan, and she has never, never been out of that village until she died. And that all her world. Compare it now with, I don't think those type of people are, I think they are a dinosaur. They are more or less, they are realistic now. Every one of us is able to move from one area to another through the world in less than a second. So, if you are in traffic jam, you are angry, or if you are uh, troubled with your workload, or if your wife is not the most romantic one, what would you do? You don't need to do a lot. There is a medical word for that. You don't need to say abracadabra. 
like uh, the most famous magical word, you can just get into Google, you can escape to Facebook, you can tweet someone, you can go to YouTube, or you can end up in the WhatsApp. So we have got now a way to get you back either with your friends and memories, with your nice childhood friends in WhatsApp, or a few jokes, you can get it from here and there, or you don't need to take a break or to fly to Cuba to have a scenery like this. So switching from your harsh reality, what we call an organic world, to the virtual world which we can create, it can take no time at all. So it's, uh, and that will change our understanding to the world. Our understanding to the world where the time and place and our physical existence are interrelated together and integrated together, they are not there anymore. So, and uh, remember that is in the past, in Sudan there is a, one type of talk, uh, they call it a Geran talk, our neighbor talk. When a woman wanted to go and have a chat, she will take that, pick that from any corner, a key type of talk. So it's called neighbor's talk or Geran talk. Nowadays you don't do that. You don't get yourself into a car because you miss your friend and you wanted to have a chat with them. You sit in your own comfort house and you talk to them and you chat with them and if that is going to affect us, if that is going to make us more nuclear within our own setting or would have an impact and then the question is this, if the whole life in the palm of your hand, who need people? And that is a worrying question which we wanted to touch on. Let us go to some factual knowledge, statistic, Facebook. We have got 1.2 billion active users. That is 9, uh, 2014. Okay? Uh, 650 Twitter account. What's up? Which is only started a few years ago. Now there is more than 700 million WhatsApp users. And those WhatsApp users, can you believe it? They exchange daily 600 million photos. Daily. And they send 64 billion messages through Twitter, Facebook, uh, an email, and so there's 64 million message exchange every day over the world. So, uh, engagement within your Android or your iPhone or your Facebook is more or less coming to one third of your time, your active waking time. So what are we going to talk today about? We will talk briefly about mind and brain. We will talk about the brain and the, how the internet is affecting the human psychology of general. And then we will touch on the dynamic of moving from the organic world to the virtual world. In the past, uh, psychologists and psychiatrists they used to call it real world and virtual world. But there was a lot of criticism because saying real world, that means you have become biased from the beginning in stating that world is not real and which will make you not a, an objective scientist. So we are using the word organic form of world. So the difference is between that world we create now, which I'm sure that if my lecture went in more boring details, a few of you will get their phones outside and then they will just get into another virtual world to move away from my boring speech. And that become part of the world, become, become part of our day-to-day -day, uh, practice. So, there is differences. Our sense of belonging to the place, our membership to that place, accountability and experience. You are here, you are living into this place, you have got physical contact, you got responsibility, you are accountable to that and create a different experience. How you know people, how you interact, how you build relationships. So there is four domain which is being affected by this new technology. Let us start with brain and mind. Okay, we all have the same brain but we don't all have the same mind. Okay. So let us get to understand that because brain has got a feature which we call it plasticity. The plasticity is coming from the, the Greek word of plasters which means molding. Everyone who have got the temporal, the frontal, or the same form of the structure,
but the connection between every area of the brain will be affected with the activity you develop within that area. It's like your muscle. You can build your triceps, your deltoid muscle, you build any muscle, depend on how much activity you are working within that muscle. So your mind is different because it is your personalized brain. So if you are more interested in one area where there is more communication within that field or that area of the brain, your mind will have a different picture and a different image. So the biological basis of the mind is that is how you personalize your brain with your own experience and how you are unique. And you can see from childhood that is how the picture of the connection of the neural network which is grow. It's not, it, it, it doesn't grow in, 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 in numbers because of, 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 of just maturity. The interaction will generate more network. And that is, has been shown in experimental animal where if you put a rat in a cage and a rat in an open space living their environment, the amount of experience, of visual, auditory experience, they experience, they develop and enrich their neural network. So the one isolated, you can see it in the left, and the one which is enriched, you can see it on the right. The one who are in the cage, you can see the network on their brain, showing a mind of minimal network complexity compared to the one uh, on the right. But you can say to me, maybe this is just a rat. No. Uh, this man uh, is driving the famous black London Cup. Uh, London Cup, the, 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 the British are still quite conservative in trying to utilize uh, technology in that field. If everyone, anyone wanted a license to be a driver in London, they have to sit for an exam to know how they can get people from A to Z without using sat nav or without using map. So they have to have a good topography of London, have to get a good understanding to the whole map of London. What that make them? Strange enough, study has shown that the complexity of the network in the hippocampal area on London Cap is more rich than any other individual in London regardless of what they are doing. Please don't tell me that because they have got rich, have a complex complexity, then they become drivers. Uh, unlikely. Okay. So they develop that and they develop it because the use of that area to fulfill that role has helped them to develop that form of a complex network. This is, has been done in the, in the lab. Uh, I think it's done in uh, San, uh, San Francisco, I think. Uh, they brought three groups and they brought a piano and they said one for one group please, please we will give you five days training in playing piano. The other two, the other group they said to them we will give you lesson to play piano but without a physical piano, play it in your mind. And the third group they said to them do nothing. You see in five days only, can you believe that the level of activity has shown between the people who have practiced it physically or mentally compared to the control? The enrichment of the network on the area which need more emphasis on that task has developed to accommodate and to be compatible with that task. So, that means our environment, shape, our mind, or our brain to formulate a mind which is compatible with the level of activities or interest you are doing at the time. So, please look at this photo and it will tell you this is a different century. We are in a different era and we have got different environmental clues affected our brain. And that definitely will create a different form of human being with a different mind according to the level of stimulation they are experienced. Now, in the past, the child, if you look into the brain, how they develop, the play room, it will be full of 14, I'm talking about middle class, please, uh, in, no, in no way, if the people can't afford it, that doesn't mean uh, we are uh, discriminating against, but we are giving an example of middle class boys 
who are able to have shelves of different form of games, different experiences. On the ground, they will have different type of games, will help them to create more or less a wide scope of different varieties. Family time, when they have your family album, they will see enjoying their meal, reading stories, playing football together. And what we are having today, and the studies being done in America, they did find that is for uh, use between 13 and 17. They spend more than 50% of their time of, the, of, 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 of their time, they spend 30 hours a week in virtual world. So we are talking, if we are talking, that means about four and a half hours every day. If they've been awake for 12 hours, that means at least this is one third or more of their time daily they are spending within a virtual world. So uh, they did find another study, texting is becoming more or less 90% of the media and the mean of communication between <coughs> youth on America. Uh, also, most of the studies have been done in America, Denmark, and uh, Britain. Uh, I don't think we are far from that. Maybe we are just uh, we are not really doing good research on that area, but I believe our utilization of technology is not far from that. And uh, we can argue about that if you have got any question on that. Okay? So, uh, you see the picture now? Uh, the picture now. This uh, family time, everyone will be holding their laptop. Dinner time, everyone will be holding their smartphone. Okay? And uh, when I call my daughter, I said to her, come here, and she just wanted, what for? Can we just have a chat? And she will sit for five minutes and then, is that all? Can I go back? go back to her YouTube and to her room, okay? So at least whatever you do, you are the most boring. Don't try to tell them any about any stories from the past or from the future because you will never have the excitement and the colorful of the world they create. So a respectful newspaper like the Telegram saying that you are eroding our childhood. Our children are living completely in a different form of a virtual world which is not in any way has got the touch of the reality of our organic world. Studies have shown that has had a significant impact on reading. Uh, children now are more or less started to get used to a different form of language for texting, for using uh, numbers, and that they did find that about 40% of children and adolescents have got a, a clear issue with reading. Uh, psychologists have found attention span is being affected and, and just I wanted to say that, uh, although we'll come back to it in a minute. Uh, in the past, we used to sit down and read a book and enjoy that for two days sometimes. And now, I dare you, any of you would be able to maintain the same abilities he used to. All of you, you've been looking now for a short version and for 5, 10 minutes, 20 minutes at most, but who will spend the whole evening now reading a book or enjoying reading a book? I think this is an ancient, a misting form of creature that are not there anymore. To the degree that newspapers like Times are now going to publish new newspapers with only brief shortcut information like tweeting and like uh, WhatsApp for people to read. Because nobody will be now sitting and enjoying that newspaper. Remember my father will come and spend the whole afternoon enjoying going to this newspaper one page and another. I don't think anybody will do that anymore. Right. Search engine. Yes. Uh, now, if we have any concern about anything, we go to our uncle Google uh, or our Sheikh Google who is now is in control of our life. And that will make us more lazy to rehearse. And when you go to Google, Google never will say to you, go and think about it. Never. He will give you an answer. Is this laziness 
would have an impact on, on our intellectual ability in the future? Please think about it. Your child, your son, your daughter will come to you in a question you can say to them, look at it this way, think about it this way. Why not to go and read about that? The human factor is important to develop what we call it the fluid memory of the human being. Are we ruining the human memory, fluid memory and making more crystallized memory where it just regurgitate information where it can be given to them? I'm not going to talk about the moral issues with who is Google because no have, they haven't got a form of a benchmark to say are we they're going to be on the right, on the left, on the middle of that point of view or not. The most click on the mouse will give them a most record. So you might ask about a question but the most silly answer could be because it's more liked by too many people. And that is another issue we will touch. So, are we coming to understand that the brain of our children and the new generation will affect, be affected and correspond to these environmental changes? We'll have a different picture. And are we going to see a future where the brain and the mind created by our new generation will be more or less deficient compared to the rich network of neurons because of the richness of the environment we create? And I think that is the important question for today. Uh, one of the concerns we have is uh, as, you, as you grow and as you get more experience, as your mind develops from the brain, you develop your frontal cortex. And the prefrontal cortex, for you all know, is a very important part of our personality. So if the network form of complexity has not been as rich as we expect with our prefrontal cortex when it reached maturity by age of 17 or 18, are we going to have a generation with lack of judgment and lack of insight and a poor uh, frontal lobe uh, development? That's the question I'm more than happy to discuss. So, then those changes is not just only going to be as developing the connection, uh, alarming. They did find that these children who are playing video games, they have got the same structural changes which is being caused by substance misuse and addiction. And the Telegram put an article on that concern and there was too many talks until there was a very uh, famous study being done in multi centers between America and China. And it was it looked for 10 hours being on the internet daily for six days and what it had. And they checked that on the MRI, they scanned people and they did find that gray areas is being affected in and those lateral prefrontal cortex, prostate area, cellular cortex, and retinal water area, and the shrinkage of part of the cerebellum. Can you believe it? Only six days, there is a significant change has happened within our own brain. What that means for us in our psychology term? It means impaired short term memory, decision making ability, reduced inhibition of inappropriate behavior, and diminished goal orientation. Oh my god. Think about a new generation who doesn't have this. So, this impairment okay, also might interfere with insight and awareness of the consequences and because the use of the internet itself as it is addictive part of it which we are going to mention it later it will be reinforced itself through the dopamine pathway so you are using it but you become more or less hooked to it as well okay so just quickly to go through this is the study i show you the changes is in the brain between uh, people who has been uh, using it and this is a significant change mainly affect all the dopamine uh, pathways uh, from the uh, necrostriatal pathway or and the prefrontal cortex and the cortical uh, cort the cortical with the third one anyway the third pathway is in effect so the whole dopamine pathway is being significantly affected okay uh, so and from that quickly. We said that those are the changes we see in the brain. And uh, Nicholas Carr has put a very interesting 
paper, he said that is uh, definitely uh, on an experimental studies shown we have a significant reduction on our attention span and our ability to sit and focus. And he said that is, this is not psychologically based, this is more or less neurologically based. And I will come back again to this. Um, please, any one of you still able to maintain reading for three hours at night or uh, you still, you need to go to the museum. <laughs> you will be kept there, people will study you. Because honestly, uh, nowadays, nobody. And even if you are able, how much of distraction you will get from your WhatsApp and from your email uh, because you can't be focused on the organic reality we are living nowadays. So that is an issue which is always we have to be careful about. So they said even people who have got no usage of internet for naive and they use it only for one week. You can see direct changes in the brain is similar to the changes on the one who have already been on the internet for ages and ages. So an internet is giving us the chance of creating a second life. And I think any one of you have got the right to say to me, what's wrong with that? I am able now to enjoy going to YouTube, see classical movies for Agatha Christie and Alfred Hitchcock. I will be able to go and download books, which is, uh, I can find all Al-Amani, Al-Farid Al-Asfahani, available free. I can read it without worrying to go to the library. I can play a game with one of my friends instead of going out and play domino or chess, I can play online. So what is the big issue? What is the big issue? And please don't think in any moment that we advocate that to forget about the internet. Although we are talking about virtual community, I will tell you about a very important virtual community uh, called I think Mabin Village. Those people are a community are already there to be activated when there is a crisis around the world. If there is a crisis in Haiti, they did a brilliant job. When there was an earthquake, all of them, they locked there, the people who are part of the community. And then you can see within their virtual map, areas which need blanket, which areas need medication, which areas, and that is completely created in every second. Any click on the mouse will show on that. And that saves a lot of time, which saves a lot of life by being able to get help, appropriate help, to the area where there is no connection, where there is no electricity, where there is nothing there, apart from a small mobile phone which is able to get message. So, what I'm saying here, please be careful. We are not here chasing, witch hunting and saying internet is a bad thing. No, it is a marvelous form of uh, invention, but we need to celebrate that, aware about where our steps were going to take us. Let us talk about Second Life. Second Life, this is a software, is being created in uh, one of the American labs, uh, psychology labs, and then they throw the software, uh, then you will just join that Second Life. You create your own image. You can call yourself Superman or Hunter Mission, that nobody will ask you, okay? You can take your features, you can build a strong muscle, and I can get rid of my small fats down here and there. Nobody will question that, okay? You can check your nationality, because nobody has got nationality. Color of your skin, your eyes, your features. And, as well, they can give you money when you join them. And the money is a virtual money, which you are able to trade and you start your own business, and you earn a virtual money. And they did find in one year, they have got one million inhabitants. More than any town or village around the world which can be built in one year. And those people spend most of that time. Yes, you can meet people, become friends, you can visit them in their own homes, and you even if some people have fallen in love with other people within that village. Um, no study has been done if they try to convey that to the organic world. Did they manage to maintain that? That's not been studied. But, so, they create their own world. And they live in that world. Let me say, so what's the problem if you are able? Am I able to play this? Mm. I'm not. 
there's a video. Can I play the video which is I ask you to? I'll put it in pause. Pause it. And do you mind if you just be with us to help us to stop it at the moment? Okay. Uh, please. Pause it. Pause it. Uh, please, I want you to watch this movie, a small clip, and I want you to see how many, how many passes on this football the white team the white team has done okay quickly the white team will pass the ball between them and i want you to count the number of passes the white team has done can we start that Cigarette and put it down and take the other 